Hello and good afternoon. Um, just let me have a look here. I think the stream is doing fine. That's okay. Let me move this. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. Uh, as some of you may notice, I've moved my camera. So it's no longer above my monitor. It's actually just next to the side of the monitor. I, I find it easier to look at you. So um, and, and I'll, I don't have to sit as high up to not look down on you or well, uh, up on you. So yeah, uh, I have not this is my first stream this week. There was no stream on Tuesday. I had some I had some unforeseen circumstances that I couldn't avoid. So yeah, today we're going to be doing something. And we're going to be doing something a bit different. Um, so we're not going to be doing anything to AWS specific. We're going to be doing it on AWS, but not too specific to AWS. So the goal of today is to build a Bastion host, right? Uh, what is a Bastion host? You may ask. So a Bastion host is a, is a, think of it as a virtual machine, an EC2 instance, something that you use as an entry point to the rest of your infrastructure, right? So um, think of it as a, you block off SSH access to all of your Linux instances, but you only give them access from this one specific box, right? So you, you increase security. So you use Bastion boxes or Bastion, Bastion servers. It's Bastion, right? Like a, like a, like a big fort, um, you use a Bastion server or a Bastion host to improve your security stance. So uh, the goal today is to kind of create this scenario, look how, how could we make it really cool. So we will not just be creating an EC2 instance and and, and being at that, we're going to be adding a, bit, a few more features to it, um, um, increasing the, let's say, um, the audibility of that, um, adding some logging features, automatic user creation, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be going through a few stuff. I have a few things on my list here. So things may not go perfectly, but uh, yeah, we'll see as we go along. Okay. So I hope you all had a, had a great weekend and oh, a great week. And uh, for those of you who have holiday tomorrow, because it's the first of May, at least in Germany, we, at least in Berlin, we, we treat that as a holiday. So uh, I'm off tomorrow. So it's Friday for me. Also this, Almost. Uh, this stream is brought to you by uh, all the ca caffeine in Club Mate. So I'm 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 jacked on ca caffeine. So it should be fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's switch over to the screen. All right. So what is the goal of today? So the goal of today is to create a, a, an EC2 instance that will sit in a publicly available subnet, right? A, a virtual machine. Uh, yeah, hey Graham. Oh, it's not a new room. It's the same room, but just a different camera angle. So, yeah, uh, a bit, bit different. <laughs> so, um, the goal of today is to create an EC2 instance that will st sit in a publicly uh, reachable uh, state or a, in a publicly available subnet, and we will use that instance to access uh, different uh, other EC2 instances in private subnets. So, basically, think of it as a, as a, this the proper way you should approach it, right? So. Do not expose SSH or RDP or whatever you use to manage your instances. Um, uh, do not expose that to the entrant, but use it through a bastion host. So you have this big old hardened box that only you can access. And then through that, you can access some other EC2 instances. Pretty neat. Um, again, nothing database specific today, apart from a few things. Um, and uh, you'll see why at, hopefully at the end of this thing. So. What do we need to do first? So I have a kind of I have a, a, a rough outline what I need to do. So first of all, I will want to go to S3 and I want to create a bucket that I will use for logging and a few other things. So let me create a bucket and I will call this uh, stream bastions, right? Stream bastions. I'll create it in Frankfurt. That's all fine. Um, let me just make this bigger. Awesome. Like that. Creating a bucket. Awesome. Now in that bucket, uh, stream bastions like that. Uh, let me just create a few folders. I want to do EU central one. So uh, this this bucket will be used to store all of the logs, all of the bastion logs, at least the important ones, and you'll see why. And I want to just make sure that I do this properly uh, and use it in a in a proper um, folder structure. Let me just have a look. Awesome. And create another folder called stream logging. I have a few scripts prepared already. Um, so I'm going to be using those things 
just so you don't have to look at me copy pasting a lot of things. Okay, so uh, stream logging works fine. That's all good. Uh, uh, one thing I want to create here as well. Well, actually, we'll do that later on. So I have set up my S3 bucket. Now, um, one of the other things I need to do, I need to create a profile for my EC2 instance. So I want to create an instance profile that will um, allow my EC2 instance to write to that S3 bucket. Now, I've done this before, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but let me show you how I would do it. So I would go to create a role and create a role that will use EC2, right? So it will basically, um, uh, it will allow EC2 instances to call of, call AWS APIs on your behalf. Click on that and give it some permissions. Now, what you would do, you would either pick a policy that already exists or create a policy. So in this case, I'm going to create a policy and I'm going to choose a service. Well, I'm going to just choose S3 um, like that. I Please close. And I want to choose some actions. Oh, wait. Pick a service, yes. Uh, pick an action. Now, I could be safe and just select a read, list, and write, right? This would be fine. Uh, I could even go further to just kind of um, make sure I pick out uh, the things I don't need here, right? You know, I don't potentially need to create job or multi-part upload or access points or those kind of things. Um, you would basically pick the things you need specifically. Um, in this case, we just need reads and writes. So, you know, uh, you have to play around with to, to see what works pro properly. Now, I will just use choose a bucket in this case, uh, add ARN. And how did we call our bucket? It's the stream bastions like that uh let me actually have a look here how did we call our bucket so i'm, I'm actually giving the permission specifically to that bucket so stream bastions that's fine yeah stream bastions cool uh stream bastions like that and i want to give this uh permission to any object or actually not any object but any object within that bucket so stream Bastions, and I will just select any object. So in essence, this will give us a, 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 a policy that looks kind of like this when we look at JSON. So it does gives them all of these permissions to basically um, stream bastions uh, as a bucket and all the resources within the uh, within the uh, bucket itself. Click review policy. Now I, you give the policy name here, so description, and that's it, right? So you just click the create policy and that should be fine. Now, I have already created a policy. Uh, so no, you don't need to worry about the other things. Uh, the other things, you can you can set up some conditionals. You can set up, you know, specific conditionals on on, on, on things you want to set up as, as well. But in this case, I, I have not. Uh, actually, let me show you how my policy looks. It's Bastion, I think Bastion host logging, yep. So my policy looks very much similar. Uh, so if I click edit policy, uh, there will be some things that it will warn you about, uh, but you know I'm just doing some resources here. I'm not doing some uh, specific conditions here as well. You know, I'm not defining a source IP, which you can in essence. So one of the things you can do here is you can limit the source IP to the IP of the Bastion host, so that sure that way you will be sure um, that uh, this host is this is the only host that can write here, or this is the only location that it can be written through. Uh, well, can use this policy, right? Uh, but you have to do like a threat assessment. So you have to understand, is it worth it to block it that much? Now, this, this bucket will contain logs and it will also, also contain some, some public information as well. So, you know, hunkering down on security can be good, uh, but really depends on what you need to do. So in, in my case, this was sufficient and I could maybe even, you know, kind of lower down the read to something more, something less, right? I can remove a few things. I have not tested all of these things, what I need and what I don't. So sometimes it would be quite useful to, uh, to have a, have a, uh, you know, a, a, a easier way to understand what, what kind of permission you need for a specific API call, but sometimes it's not, not super visible, especially on S3. So I have that policy already set. So basically what would happen here, I would select that policy, um, Bastion that hosting, and that would be fine, right? Nothing else. And I can just click next and finish, create my role. But I have that role already. So if I go Bastion, I have a Bastion host role, which only has that policy attached here, and that's it. So this is the role I will be using to attach to my EC2 instances, which is cool. 
well, which will I attach to my Bash and Host. So let's move on to the Bash and Host itself. So in this use case, I'm going to just be creating an EC2 instance. So launch instance, uh, uh, like that. I'll select Amazon Linux 2. Uh, let's choose an X2 lar or an X large instance. Uh, I'm going to be adding it to a... So, okay, I haven't explained this. Uh, I have a VPC that has a private and a public subnet. So it has one private subnet and one public subnet. So the private subnet has no public IP addresses or it, it's unable to be accessed directly. Um, but the private subnet has... Um, well, it can be it can it can talk to the public subnet, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a, a Bastion host within the public subnet, and I'm going to be using the, uh, the Bastion host to access the instances in the private subnet. So if you see here, I have two pub subnets. One is a public, one is a private. So uh, in this case, uh, the I'm going to choose a public one, and I'm going to select that I need the public IP. So Graham asks, uh, what do you think of IAM Simulator? So that's a great thing. Uh, uh, that's a great way to play around with finding out potential which IAM roles you need for a specific call. Again, um, it, to be fair, I have not played with it too much, but it, it, it is a really neat, neat tool. So uh, definitely, definitely a good way to get started. So this good VPC, public subnet, that's fine. Uh, and let me cho choose my IAM role, which is Bastion Hosts. Now, I will not add anything here as well. This is all fine. I will add some storage to this thing because this is our Bastion host. I want to add, make sure it has enough storage for people to use it. You expect that uh, your Bastion hosts are used by multiple people. Uh, and let's call this uh, streaming Bastion host. Right? Awesome. Security group. I have an existing security group that allows uh, SSH access from anywhere. Now you would probably kind of tighten this down to something more or something specific to your company, to a VPN network or something like that. So this would be a this would be a bit more tattered than just everybody. But also you can leave it to to the world, but make sure to kind of have some hardening enabled on the SE2 instance because you're you're giving it over to the world. So review and launch and. Uh, I will use this key pair. I have a key called Bash and Host, and I'm going to be using that one. Awesome. So now I just have to give it a minute or so for it to launch. And once it's launched, I'm going to be, well, um, playing around with it. So. Okay. Refresh. Cool. I think we can slowly connect to this one. Just copy paste this. So it has a public IP address. So let me go to my terminal. Let me go to SSH. Now let me try to do this. Will this work? Yes. Yes. Cool. So now I'm connected to a Bastion host. No gin tonight. Nope, not gin tonight. Uh, I actually am on on a highly caffeinated. Um, tea-based drinks so uh, if you have never seen this it's a it's kind of a german thing or especially a berlin thing so very bitter um it's a mate drink okay so um a few things we need to do now let me just have a look at my list what i need to do uh, um, okay so uh what i'm gonna be doing here right now is i am gonna be configuring um the the bastion host to basically redirect or log all SSH connections to um, to an S3 bucket or to a specific log file. So what happens, how would you use this uh, host? You would have your operators, people in operations, people who manage your servers, people who have to ha actually SSH into some boxes. They would log into this one using SSH. And then from this one, they would use it as jump box for other places. Now, to establish proper logging with just the native vanilla tools, we can use a couple of tricks here. We can basically wrap a specific SSH shell in another shell um, that allows that logs basically everything uh, that uh, that users do. So let's do that. Let me just switch to root uh, like that, and let's create a few directories. Mkdir uh, var log. 
Uh, Bastion. So this is where we will be keep, keeping all of our uh, logs. Um, now let's give some permissions. Ch own ec2 user ec2 user to the var log bastion. So uh, we're basically adding, giving uh, the ec2 user permission. Well, giving the ownership to the EC2 user for this log uh, to this file. So chmod. Uh, then let's change some permissions. Seven seven zero not eight seven seven zero to a var log bastion. Now we're changing the permissions for this uh, directory as well. And now let's set a couple of flags for this one or file a uh, not flags. Let's self let's set file ACLs for this instance. So we use the set facl. Um, set facl um, um, utility rdm uh, and other and zero and then var log bastion. Good. Excellent. That's fine. We created the folder we need to um, to configure this. Now, one thing I need to do, and I'm actually going to paste this, is I'm going to change something in my SSH deconfig. So. I am gonna force a command for everybody who's logging in via SSH to use a specific shell within the USR bin bastion shell. So they're not gonna log in through their own shell. Um, yeah, absolutely. You could do this all through uh, uh, user data gram. Um, nothing prevents you from doing that. I just like to show this as, as kind of step by step what I do. So just kind of explain things as I go along. I, I could have pasted all of my scripts in a, in a single user data file and just ran it and that would be a super boring stream. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm just adding this line. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm adding a line called force command to, to, to SSH, SSH deconfig. Cool. Okay, so let's block some features. I also want to change some features. Um, uh, in my file, I want to I want to disable TCP forwarding, right? So like that, I want to disable um, uh, X11 forwarding. I also want to basically add the same thing in a different format, right? So like that. Cool. So basically, what I have done right now is I have disabled. Uh, X11 and TCP forwarding for SSH connection. So you couldn't forward your X11 or graphical applications through SSH uh, locally, but or you could you couldn't even do like tunneling at TCP forwarding, etc. So you can only SSH into this. You couldn't ex escape from the shell. Well, I'm sure some people could. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Let's create this directory. I mentioned I showed you this shell. So USR bench bastion shell. So this is the basically the, the the new shell we will be giving to people. So let me just create a this location. So mkdir uh, USR bin bastion. Right. Awesome. So uh, let's add this shell file. Right. So if I vim USR uh, USR bin bastion shell. And let me just, I, I will copy paste this because I have a few things I want to copy paste. Where is this? Oh, there you go. So in essence, what this does is this will um, log all the things that people do in a shell, right? So it will create a log file, it will notify, it will actually print a welcome message to the person, hey, uh, uh, this session file will be logged and it will log it with the script command. And you'll see why script is important as we can do a script replay later on, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so if you try to pass it a command, you will get warned that this only supports interactive sessions. You couldn't do any, you couldn't supply the command. So that's cool. So we have created this file. That's fine. Um, pretty cool. Uh, let me add some flags to this file. chmod a plus x, make it executable. USR bin bastion, not bastion, and then shell. Coolio. Um, once this is done, uh, uh, um, Let's make sure that people cannot use the script command here as well, because that would kind of, it will allow them to do some fancy things on on, on this command. They could pr prevent from logging. So a bit more security on this one, right? So let's let's uh, let's do that. And also, um, 
let's prevent uh, users of this Bastion host to view processes ran by other users, right? So uh, let me just uh, move this on the proc file. I want to change something in the FS tab, basically the way I mount the processes file, right? Or the processes uh, partition, however you call it. And then um, add this thing to FS tab. Awesome. So we have updated the way we, basically now non-root users should not be able to see processes from non-root non users, right? That's fine. Now, the last we need to do SSHD or, uh, or uh, service SSHD restart. Cool. So now this should have been fine. So, uh, mm, cool. So now anytime I would log into this session, so if I would exit here and exit here again, if I try to connect like this, I will get a notification hey, this SSH session is being recorded and this is the audit key or basically the name of the log file for this session. That's very cool, sudo su. Okay, now we need to do a few things. So I, I mentioned that uh, the goal of this is also to ship those logs off to S3. So I'm gonna be creating a little script that, that ships those logs, basically syncs the logs, the audit logs locally to an S3 bucket, right? So let me just, find uh, a script I have it's it's pretty massive so I want to copy paste like so so I'm gonna create it the script in the same location as before vim usr bin bastion and call it uh, sync s3 right Do that and like that there's a few things I need to change here as well so I have some old buckets I've been using here so I need to change bucket names to something better. So Bastion hosts logging. Um, what's the name of our bucket? I forgot. Uh, it's the stream bastions, right? Stream bastions. Da, da, da. Oh, no. Okay, let me change that. Stream Bastions, that's all, all fine and dandy. Uh, there's another uh, another thing with the Bastions, yeah, it's like that. Let me delete uh, this, this, and this, and this. Using none of standard Vim configuration for me. Uh, stream Bastions, right, okay, cool. So let me just have a look. Bucket, uh, bucket, 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 that's fine, okay. Cool. So in essence, what does this script do? There's a few things it does. Um, so, oh no, this is the wrong one. Ah, aha, I copied the wrong one, but we're going to be needing this one as well. So um, let me just do this. Uh, CP or MV. This is for syncing users, and, and, and we'll come to that. Um, sync users, is it users? Let me have a look, is that sync users? Yes, sync users. Okay, so again, back to this one, and this should not be sync S3, it should be this. It's just a short script for this one. Awesome. So. This one, in essence, what it does, again, it just syncs the 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 file, or basically it syncs the the um, the log files from the Bastion hosts off to S3. So let me just change this again. Stream Bastions. Awesome. Nothing else. So it will basically just take the information from the log directory and push it over to uh, to the S3 bucket. All right, uh, that looks fine. Mm, have a look here. Now, let me have a look actually the, at, the, at the other file that I've, I've, I've previously <laughs> written, but uh, it's actually used for something else. So one of the things we're gonna also be doing is we're, we're gonna be adding um, public keys. Basically, we're gonna be allowing people to SSH uh, locally with a specific public key. Um, uh, 
they have locally to the CC2 instance. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a, a directory within our uh, S3 bucket called public keys. And within that, we're going to paste, basically paste or create public keys from our users. So what happens here, this is going to be running in a cron job every five minutes, I believe. Uh, it will take the key. It will take the first part of the key, the thing before pub, and create a user locally. So it will create a user. If I create a darko.pub, it will create a user called darko locally. And that user will have a specific public key, uh, well, key pair combination set on this uh, EC2 instance so that user can easily log in. And if you would remove that key, after a while, it would remove that user as well. So it's kind of a, um, let's say, a rudimentary um, user management system just through scripting and S3. So pretty neat, right? So this is a really cool, cool script. Okay, uh, once this is done, uh, what I also need to do is I need to, oh, yes, I need to add permissions. chmod 700 USR bin ba bastion uh, sync S3, right? S3 and chmod and sync users. Right? So for LSL USR bin bastion. Yeah, this is all fine. It's all executable, so that it can actually be run. Very good. Uh, now, last but not least, we need to create a cron job, uh, basically a task that will run every every X uh, that will um, execute these scripts. So one script will b basically upload the logs off to S3, and the other one will uh, sync the users. So I will actually just create a file with two cron jobs so let's call it then crony like that i'm gonna paste these two things here so these files are basically just um, executing i believe every five minutes uh, or, or the every fifth minute uh, that's fine and i just do cron cron tab crony and if i do cron tab list or l it will show me that i have these two cron jobs created so i'm gonna just rm the anything because I don't need it excellent cool now this should be all fine so I am basically now ready to start using this thing as um, as um, as a basically as a, as a bastion host so let me exit from here and let's see if this would work so let's let's go back a bit uh, I'm gonna go to to EC2 and I'm gonna create a, 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 a key I'm gonna be creating a, a key pair for uh, myself so let's call it um, stream darko or let's just call it uh, darko bastion like that i'll create a pem key now this is a private key that i'm getting here now with this private key uh one of the things i can do is let me open up this now with this private key if i go i need to copy it first from downloads uh, you can see here downloads and Darko Bastion, yeah, Bastion Pem, and I'm gonna copy it here to the SSH directory. So this key is here right now in the SSH directory. Um, I need to just change some permissions, chmod 400, uh, Darko Bastion Pem. Okay, uh, one thing I need right now from this private key, I need, I need a public key. I need its public key pair. Now, you don't get your public key pair by default from AWS when you create this key. So the thing, what you need to do is you need to um, basically generate this or, or find it out. You can use it with SSH keygen. Uh, you can use the, the Y and F command and just do this, Darko Bastion Pam, and just paste it into Darko Bastion Pub, right? So this will give you a Darko Bastion dot pub key, which basically you can use freely. So this is public information. Essence. So uh, what I'll do right now is I will go to S3 to my bucket here and I said that I'm gonna create a little directory here called public underscore keys right is that how I said it um, let me just have a look at my script how does it look uh, public underscore keys yes so in this thing if I click Save and I just upload my file here let me just open up this this to be precise, Darko Bastion Bob. 
like that drop upload come on listen to me what's wrong why is this not working let me just see okay it took a moment <laughs> So, uh, the Arco Bash above. So, this key is created right now here. And uh, one of the things we should be able to see at one point is in the stream logging, uh, uh, in the stream logging folder, we should be able to see uh, the logs either being shipped after five minutes and the, like, the logs also for users being created. So, there's also a delay of around a few minutes here because we're just relying on cron job to do this every X. So, if we have a look at the back in the instance, so if I would try to connect using the, uh, well, the, the built-in, um, uh, the, the, the key we used before, if we have a look at cat or ls home, let's see if some, no, no users have been created yet. So cd var log bastion, is there anything here? There are these files here, but nothing has in essence been created yet besides this file and, and the cron jobs will run I think, well, in a couple of minutes. <laughs> so let's just let's just wait it out a bit for this to show up. And uh, yeah. So in the in the meantime, um, what can we do? What can we do while we wait? Hmm. Let's create an EC2 instance. Let's create an EC2 instance in the private subnet that we're going to be using as as the one we're, the, the one we're going to be accessing actually so let's go to instances launch instance again amazon linux 2 t2 micro is fine for this use case um, make sure to select the same vpc i'm going to use the private subnet and the instances are not going to get public ip addresses so i could not access this instance through the through the subnet now they don't need any roles but i'm going to uh, just add a simple role here just kind of for some for some for some future things as we go along um, go to storage, uh, eight gigabytes is just perfectly fine. Give it a name, um, name, super secret, secret, private instance, right? And configure the security group. I'm going to choose an existing security group. It's this one. Basically this, the security groups allows SSH access only from instances sitting in a different security group. And this security group is the one which our Bastion host is sitting in. So basically, in essence, this allows uh, this port 22 to be accessed only from the Bastion host at this moment. So click that, create that. And I'm gonna say, you know what? Use the Darko Bastion key. So it's gonna basically burn in that key there as well. Excellent. So now while that is launching, let's see if something has happened here. So I think not. I think we still have to wait a bit. Uh, and if nothing happens in a few minutes, we're going to have to troubleshoot because yeah, not everything uh, <laughs> works out of the box with these things, right? There's been a lot of scripts. I've been writing a lot of scripts. I've been executing a lot of commands. I may have done something wrong. So, but let's see. We, we fiddled with uh, policies and, and, and roles. All of that can can go wrong. So All right. I think we can refresh. Nothing yet, but let's have a look in the in the server itself. Maybe we have something on this side. LL, nothing yet. Um cron tab. Well, that's running as root, so if I would ls home, so I'm lsing home just to see if I have this user created, or I can also do cat etsy password, um, just to see if the user Darko has been created. Basically, it should create a user called, um, if I look here, public keys, it should create a user called Darko Bastion, right? But nothing has been executed. I think now, slowly, it should be running, because I think it runs on every fifth minute, so... Uh, stream logging again. Uh, there are no objects under this path. Oh, I know what's the problem. Ha! Huh. Yes. I mentioned IAM, right? <laughs> I use my old IAM policy, and my old IAM policy allows only reading and writing from a specific bucket. So let me just go back to here and go to Bastion, host logging, and then edit my policy. 
and now I need to add more buckets. So here, um, let's add another one. Let's, what did it call it? Stream bastions, like so. And this one, again, stream bastions and any file. This should be good. This one, I think this one doesn't have any resources specified. So yeah, uh, let's click the review policy thing. Um, move my face. Uh, that's all good. Save changes. I have an old version of this, so I'll delete and save. Cool. So now, well, again, in a few minutes. So what happened right now is that this the EC2 instance, even though it tried to read and write to, to the S3 bucket, it couldn't because it didn't have permission. The, the instance role I've attached to the CC2 instance had permissions to write it to an S3 bucket, but to a different S3 bucket. So I've in this case, I've, I've added specific permissions to read from this bucket as well. So um, let's see if anything happened. I don't think now, I think we have to wait a bit more as well. So um, like that, yeah, there's no, nothing, no, no, nothing happening within the logging part. But one of the things we can do is if we sort of sue and we go to execute the USR, USR bin bastion and then the what is the command we want to run it's the sync s3 right so if you run this it I can see it has uploaded the log files to here so if I refresh this I will be able to see the log files uh, of my previous sessions here so this is really cool if at any point you would like to review these log files or what people have been doing on these ec2 instances um as 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 well as users right what, what anybody has been doing on a bastion host as a user okay so um one more thing uh well this is while we're waiting here i want to add one key so ssh add just add this to the agent so uh, I can add this identity. I will, I'm adding this identity right now so that I can move it along. I can forward this identity to the Bastion host when I log into the Bastion host and you'll see that in a moment. Uh, okay, just, let me just connect to my Bastion host again. Uh, cat or sorry, not cat, uh, oh, cat, let's see, password. Uh, nothing yet. So we're still waiting for that user to show up. So instead of waiting, let me just do sudo su. And then again, a USR bin, bastion, bastion, and then sync users. See if this works. It worked. Awesome. So it has created a user called Darko Bastion and it has created an authorized key file within uh, that user's directory. So if I would cat Etsy password, um, you see that there's a Dark, Darko Bastion user here as well. So now, if all this is okay, what what should I be able to do? I should be able to do SSH dash A. This means I'm forwarding my identities along with me so that I can use them later on uh, to connect to other instances. Right? So for example, I'm forwarding my Darko Bastion PEM key as well so that I can use it to connect through the Bastion host to the other instance I've been creating it without actually copying the private key over so it, it follows along with me in the session. So I can just collect Darko Bastion, right, at, hmm, what's the IP address of this instance? Um, if I go to here and just look for um, stream, right? Uh, there it is, streaming bastions, I think so, yeah. Copy this thing here. Like so. I still need to pass it on a, a, a key, right? So I need to pass it on the Bastion hosts thing, right? No, I'm, and I'm logged in, right? Actually, no, 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 no. Let me just exit. Not the Bastion host. Let me just call login with my Darko one because that's the one I've created and that one should be working. Excellent. So now I'm logged in as that new user that has been automatically created and that user doesn't have the root key to EC2 user. That user has only their own, own, own key that was created through uh, the EC2 console. And now I have full access to the CC2 instance, right? So I can just, you know, uh, well, I, ca I cannot sudo, right? If I do sudo L, uh, it will ask me for a password and I don't have a password, so it will fail, right? Uh, I can, you know, cat var log bastion and then some log file, I think. I, I, can I do that? I can't. 
No, I can't. I don't have permissions, right? So, I'm, again, a very limited user to this box. I can, can I DFS? H yeah, I can just see the basic things running locally. So, uh, who am I? My name is Darko Bastion. That's fine. But because this is a Bastion host, let's actually jump from the Bastion host to an EC2 instance and let's have a look at this one. Uh, what's the name of that one? Super secret S something. Yeah, super secret or s mm. secret. Right. Yeah, there it is. Now, this one doesn't have a public IP, so I'm going to be just using the local IP. So one of the things I can do here is SSH Darko uh, or EC2 user. I could just use EC2 user because that instance has been launched with that uh, Darko Bastion key as well. So just like that. And so, yes, there you go. I'm logged into that instance without passing any keys, nothing, nothing at all. Um, I just basically took it over from my workstation along with me through the Bastion host. Now, what's 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 really cool here? So if I uh, sudo apt uh, install links, sorry, links, and I think that's fine. Not apt, sudo yum. Yum, yum, update, why, right? What would happen if you use systems manager access to access this host via the bastion? That would bypass the access, absolutely. So using systems manager here would completely bypass the bastion because it's using a different different method of access. So that's why we would choose one or the other, absolutely. So sudo update yum, blah, blah, blah. Install links. I just want to show a few things. Uh, yeah, like so. So if I look at links, links, dub, dub, dub. So links is a is a is a is a text based browser, nothing else. So I just want I just want to show you something uh, that I can browse the internet from this instance, even though this instance does not have a public IP address. So the, this is Google in text form. <laughs> yeah, I can you know ping google.com and all those things, right? So that, that's all fine. So this one works. Uh, you know I can edit files. Uh, hello MD. This is a markdown file. Look, lol, look at me go. This is cool, right? So save this. Uh, and yeah, I'm done with my work. I've done some job on this instance. That's pretty fine. Exit, exit, cool. So, what was the post? Of, what was the point of logging? Uh, well, actually, let me show you. So, <laughs> there's a few things we can do when it comes to logging. So let's say I am the, the the admin user. I'm no longer in Darko Bastion. I'm this admin user. I want to see what Darko has been doing on my Bastion host. So let me log into as my uh, root user or basically as my as my big boss user to the Bastion host. So I'm lo now logged in as the admin or, or whoever you would like to call this person. So sudo su, right? Um, now you can do this just with sudo. I'm doing with sudo su, so I type less, but use it, use, use sudo, it's better. Uh, I just have to have a look here now. So ls var log uh, bastion, right? Okay. I see the last log file from Darko is the one on this time, right? So 40 thing thing. Okay, cool. So I'll take this and I will do something here. Uh, I need a little, I need to specify a variable. So I'm specifying a variable called log file. And within this variable, I'm going to select this or actually just this and add it here like so. Cool. Now, because we're, we're using script to record this, we can use script replay to replay the data or replay, basically have an instant replay of what this user has been doing through the um, through the Bastion host on some other instances. So no matter which instance they connected through uh, to the host, like uh, it can be any SSH connection, multiple SSH connections, doesn't really matter. As long as they're using the Bastion host as a, as a jump box, this will be recorded. So for auditing purpose, this is amazing. So look at this. So this is literally just now replicating anything I've, I've typed on, on, on this server um, as Darko Bastion, hopefully. So it, it literally, it, it does in the same in real time. So uh, it's not just reading a log file, see, I'm not typing anything. So <laughs> this, is, this is all being done through uh, the magic of script replay. 
So it, it records all the times, it records all the all the all the commands I did as well. So you can see that it 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 not just it does basically everything. So it does all the commands I typed. It even replays full screen applications such as links and vim, and you will see that as well. So script is this great utility to put this, um, but besides other things, right? So there's this also online tool called ASCII Cinema. It kind of does the same thing uh, by um, by recording all of your inputs in real time and playing it as text. So this is a great way to show this. Again, I'm not doing anything. This now it's just waiting because I was probably talking to you at this point when I was typing. So does it, it actually does it in full real time? Um, so I'm connecting to the to the EC2 box. Yeah, I was looking for the IP address right now. So it's connecting to the EC2 box. Uh, well, looking for the the, the, the IP address. Let's see that. So it's pretty cool to kind of understand what people did and how people did it. Um, I, I think for for logging purposes, this is really cool. Let me just have a look at how 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 installation. Oh yeah, I tried apt on a, on a Amazon Linux instance, which doesn't work. Right, apt not command. Okay, yeah, it, it's all smooth. It's all running like that. And again, I'm running this on the server right now, but you can run it anywhere. You can download those log files uh, from S3 and replay it on any other box. So. If you have auditors coming in and ask you who has been accessing your production systems, voila, you can literally give them play by play of what people have been doing. So um, on, on, on any system you have, right? So it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful. And I, I especially love the fact that you can, it's not just which commands they run, it's basically how they did everything. So it's not, you can see my browser, my links browser here, and you can see what my Vim editor later on with all the lo lovely colors and the things. So. I think I think it's it, I think it's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, so all that works, the internet works, and finally, just let me have a look at Vim. I hope this works as fine. Famous last words. Yeah, you see Vim in all its glory. So yeah, this is pretty cool, and this this was the whole thing, right? So if I would go to like uh, the S3 bucket right now, if I would refresh here. Uh, you will see all of these logs. You can see these the ones that I've accessed with, and I can again download them locally and work with them and, and play. So there's also the user change log. So this is log basically that gets added here every time it picks up a new user from the from the public repo as well. Oh, Graham asks, how did you come to this idea? Oh, it's not my idea. Oh, by by no means. So the idea actually comes from a blog post written by my colleague uh, Nicholas. So I'll actually share the blog post later on. So um, this is not something I've invented. So this is this is general practice how people do things, right? So on, when they use bashing hosts. But one of the things I used here, I wanted to show you how you can do this, you know, by using AWS. Oh, sorry, using standard tools. So no tools that I've used here are any proprietary tool. They're basically just open source Linux tools present on on mainly every Linux distro. The only proprietary thing is S3 buckets, right? But it doesn't have to be that. Um, now. What is the other approach approach I could have taken here? And I've actually done a stream on this. So it took me 45, well, half an hour to do this on stream, right? With some talking. But I could have also went to SSM, like so. Um, go to Session Manager. Uh, start a session. Select my super secret uh, private instance. Click here. And well, bam. I'm logged into my secret, super secret uh, uh, private instance without a hitch. The only thing it had to have is a proper permission for me to do that. Uh, there you go, Doug. You just see it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is basically the whole point. Um, uh, I, I wanted to show you that you can do this the manual way, but you can do it by using it something like this, right? Uh, Exactly. You don't need a Bastion host anymore. You have services such as uh, uh, Systems Manager Run Command or Systems Manager Session Manager that does all the same things for you. Exactly. So you can also save. You know, you can uh, you can save uh, things to an S3 bucket. You can send this to CloudWatch logs to have you know alerting. For example, you send the log stream to CloudWatch logs, parse those logs, and detect if somebody ran sudo or somebody ran 
I don't know. I, I used to work for a company that if you would run bash inside of your Linux box, your manager will get an email. So those kind of things, right? So yeah, absolutely. So maintenance of a bash and host, you still need to, you need to maintain it, right? Uh, but if you have systems manager, you don't. Uh, gray mask as soon as you users have ac console access true well actually no so one of the other things i could do here as well so if i exit um exit exit uh, like that and if i find my instance id like so uh what is this it's this one if i go aws ssm start start session dash dash target and then just do this and and uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, operation I something something is not connected did I not paste this correctly if I terminate this aha region u central one like so so I can do it from the command line by using database CLI as well as as me using it uh, using the the web UI so there's no need for you to have web console access at all. So uh, absolutely through the CLI, you can create tunnels like this. You can tunnel uh, port forward things as well. So it's pretty powerful. Now, there are reasons why people would like to use Bastion host, you know, uh, making sure you have like a common set of tools in one place that you can interact with other instances is fair. Um, but for these kind of things, for most people using systems manager, um, as a bastion host or a bastion host or a, or a session management thing is just amazing so uh, my entire stream was here to show you how long it took me with uh, three different scripts or four different scripts or whatnot to configure a bastion host to do all of these things and it took me seven seconds to do it with systems manager right um, it's 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 much much simpler much much more streamlined to do it with session, uh, session manager than to do it with a bastion host so yeah, <laughs> that's that's my whole spiel. It's a, it was a, but I had fun. I had fun configuring this, right? I, I like I like I like screen, uh, script replay. I think it's really cool. That's not available if you do it through session man uh, session manager. In session manager, you will just collect all of your logs, all the commands that have been run on the on um, uh, through the CLI. So yeah, what was the instance inside the direct to the bashing host or your other machine? So. Uh, no, the instance ID is directly to the machine, not to the bastion host. So I'm completely avoiding the bastion host. So who am I? I am EC2 user, SSM user, but uh, how can I see? So the, 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 the instance I've created had eight gigs of storage. Yeah, so you can see this is the smaller instance I've created before. So this is not the one. This one doesn't have a public IP address, so it, it should have links installed. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> it's pre pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I think... So yeah, SSM even in a private subnet. So this instance has access to the internet, right? So it, it uses a NAT gateway to access an internet, uh, access, the, access the internet, but um, it, it runs perfectly even in a private subnet. So this instance doesn't have a public IP address at all. Um, and I'm able to access it through uh, the AWS CLI. Now, mind you, this is not SSH. This is simulated SSH. So this is not running through the open SSHD service. I believe you don't even have to have it installed. Uh, you can run it completely independently. This is basically using 443 um, HTTPS for this as well. Uh, any security risk? I mean, there's always a security risk. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what out of the box it is. <laughs> you know, one of the things I know about is that um, um, the way it pushes command sometimes, uh, you have to I, I've heard this. This might I might be completely wrong, uh, but at least once this one launched, they had some issues of syncing uh, the log files back to S3. So uh, you can check that out by you know running something and just killing your uh, your your session, like just closing down the the terminal uh, or without exiting, right? So without doing this. So I know that in the beginning they had some issues with. Without, if you not do not exit the session, maybe some things will not be logged. But I think that was fixed since then. So yeah, I, I think it, I think it's a great, great little uh, utility and service. Um, and definitely anybody using AWS and instances on AWS and requires access to them. Now this works both on Windows and on um, 
on Linux. So for Windows, you can do PowerShell remoting. For 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 Linux, well, on PowerShell remoting, you PowerShell, you get PowerShell, right? So and for Linux, you get shell access. Um, if you use uh, like port forwarding, and I've showed this in one of my last streams, if you use port forwarding, you can actually use RDP uh, directly uh, through this. So super, super powerful. Yeah, and basically that was my whole thing, right? So that was my uh, my whole spiel. Uh, I showed you uh, I showed you how you can configure a Bastion host uh, by using uh, you know general run of the mill Linux tooling. It took us forty minutes to do it. Uh, then I showed you how you can do it with Systems Manager, and it took us only a couple of seconds. So uh, my advice is, if you can use Systems Manager uh, because it will help you uh, dearly. One more thing, Systems Manager also works on on-prem. So I wish I was able to dis demonstrate this, but I didn't have time to, sh to show it to you. I can literally spin up a Raspberry Pi here, install an SSM agent to it, and SSM will be able to manage my Raspberry Pi. So on-prem, right? Pretty cool. So yeah, um, that's that, I guess. Um, I think this will be it for this stream. Uh, stay tuned for more streams coming up next week. I still don't know what I'm going to do. I'm trying to get a colleague of mine to work with me on doing one special stream. So we might do something together. Um, we'll, we'll see about that. So uh, for all of you who have a long weekend ahead, I wish you a really nice weekend and, and hope you have some rest. And I'll be seeing you next week, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, thank you, Graham. Um, really happy to see you all here every time. So once again, thank you very much, and I will be seeing you next week. Bye-bye.